Well, hello, hello, hello. Guess what? It is officially Wednesday at four o'clock and you know what that means. That means it is time for another episode of Quarantine with Quinn. And if you have been following me, you know that I have started honestly doing tips tricks, transformation for entrepreneurs just like you who are looking to grow and leverage their business through the art of public speaking. So if you know that you are a Black woman in business who is also passionate about making a profit from public speaking, you are absolutely positively in the right place. And I'm super excited because today I'm going to talk to you about the number one mistake that Black women in business make when they market themselves as just a motivator motivational speaker. And honestly, it, it is really costing them money in sales. So I am live on a couple of different platforms. So if you see me looking here and there and everywhere, I'm on Instagram. Hey, how are you? Good to see you as well as I am on um, Facebook as well. So you know the drill, you know the routine. If you are brand new, I want you to go ahead and type in First time in the comments, if you've been rocking and rolling with me since the beginning, um, if this is your second or third time, you are considered family, and I want you to go ahead and put tribe in the comment box so I know exactly who who you are and how I can serve you. Hey, Rokita. Hey, Lucinda. Always happy and excited and honored that you are here with me. But yeah, go ahead and do that. So I know that one of the main reasons that you decided to jump on is because you have marketed yourself as a motivational speaker. Most of us have. There is no shade, but I'm going to actually break down why just marketing yourself as a motivational speaker could potentially be costing you money and literally leaving money on the table. And to be honest with you, really kind of putting you in a box that you might not even be aware of, because I know that for the most part, many of us think that it is popular. We think that it is what we're supposed to do is market ourselves as a motivational speaker. But if that is how you're motivating and marketing yourself, then you could potentially be leaving money on the table. And I know that we have some people, John Nicka, hope I'm saying your name right. You're here for the first time. Hey girl. Hey, we also have Rokita who is here as well. And if you know anything about me, I am Quinn Conyers and I train black women in business, how to turn conversations into cash so they can profit from public speaking on and offline. A lot of times when we start our businesses as black women, we raise our hand and say, yes, I want to be an entrepreneur. Yes, I want to be a business owner. And what happens is people start to inbox us and ask us to speak at their virtual event or speak at their live event, or be a keynote speaker, or be a workshop presenter, and we really have no clue what we're doing. We don't know what to say. We don't know how much to charge, or even worse, we don't know how to maximize or monetize that opportunity, and that is where I come in. I show you how to leverage your voice in your business as an income stream, a um, marketing strategy, and overall lead generation. When you open your mouth, it should be a marketing machine for your business. And the way you answer the question, what do you do? And the way you tell people what you do could be the reason why people want to work with you or not. So my goal, my mission, my vision is to make sure that you are the spokesperson for your business, your book, or your brand. So when you open your mouth, you are clear, concise, and compelling as the spokesperson and advocate for your business. So if that has gotten you excited, then you're positively in the right place. And if you're on social media, especially Facebook, I think it's important, not necessarily for me just to tell you who I am. It is also important for you to show, for me to show you who I am. So I'm going to... So let's 
let's get into this, right? So you you joined on, you are here because you know that you're a speaker and the best way that you can describe yourself is a motivational speaker. And a lot of times there are two separate ways that you can make money speaking. The first way is when people pay you an upfront fee or honorarium. So for example, somebody might reach out to you and say, hey, Gersha, we want you to speak or hey, Josephine, we want you to do a workshop or a seminar. How much do you charge? And then you give that person your fee or your honorarium. The second way, which is my specialty, is when you speak to sell or speak to serve, meaning that you might not be getting a paid upfront fee or honorarium. However, what you are doing is able to sell your products, your services, or your coaching program instantly after you speak. So if that is you, I want to give you some insight on how you can begin to leverage that by not just calling yourself a motivational speaker. Now, one of the things that you need to understand about this whole speaking industry is that 51% of speakers and entrepreneurs make their money up front through getting a fee. And there's 49% of speakers and entrepreneurs who make their money by speaking for free or waiving their fee and then offering a product, service, or a coaching program at the end. The issue with the 51% is a lot of times that money, that upfront money and honorarium and fees goes to famous people, celebrity people, people that have a name draw, right? So they're going to pay you up front because you're already on TV, you're an influencer, you have recognition, people know who you are. So they're paying because they feel like if they put you on a flyer, they put you on a stage, you're going to put butts in the seat, right? So then there's people like you and me who maybe we don't have that much of name recognition and people don't really know who we are, but we're still absolutely awesome and amazing. So it might be a little bit more difficult for us to pull that fee or honorarium out of people. Well, good news, you can still make money. And the way that you do that is by speaking, obviously, and then offering a product or a service after the fact. But the problem is most of us, especially as black women, our focus when we speak is we want to serve somebody. We want to empower somebody. We want to motivate someone. And all of that is great, but at the end of the day, motivational speakers are just a title. And what you have to get into your brain and what you have to understand as a black woman is that you have to understand the transformation that you provide. So yes, you're motivating, but we're so focused on motivating and empowering that we forget that our ultimate job is to be a salesperson. What we're ultimately here to do is to make sure that when we open up our mouths, we are communicating to convert. What does that mean? That means that when we open our mouth, that means that when we are speaking, that means that when we are, you know, on stage, whether it's virtually or in person, we are communicating in a way that attracts clients and customers. And that takes a little bit more than just giving you inspiration and motivation. Nine times out of 10, when you open up your mouth and you speak, you're going to provide motivation. You're going to provide inspiration. That is absolutely going to happen. The problem is, are you connecting? Are you converting? Are people buying? Buying what you have to offer after you speak. And if the answer is no, it's probably because it's too much motivation and not enough conversion. So when you open your mouth and you are going into these opportunities to speak, one of the ways that you want to monetize, hey, Cliff, how are you? One of the ways that you want to monetize and maximize that opportunity is to really not think of yourself as a motivational speaker, but think about yourself as the person who is the advocate for your awesomeness, the person who is the chief salesperson for your products, your services, or your books. Because once you make that mental shift, you won't focus as much on giving motivation, but you'll focus on using the speaking opportunity and platform as lead generation. And the reason why speaking is such a great opportunity for lead generation, because you are leveraging what I call the one-on-many model. Now, if you're not familiar with the one-on-many model, there's a couple of different ways that you can get customers and clients to become, be a part of your business. You can do a couple of discovery calls, talk to people one-on-one, and then you can enroll them into whatever offer that you have. Or you can do it the way that I love to do it, where you speak one-on-many. So you might walk into a virtual event, or you might be hosting your own event, or when the world opens back up, you might be speaking on a physical stage. And in that stage, or in that audience, there could be 50, 500, 5,000 people. My goal would be make sure, yes, you motivate them, but how does that motivation lead you to money? So my goal would be to teach you 
How do you deliver a presentation that gets you paid? And most of us are truly working on just being motivational, being empowering and being inspirational. And all those things are good, but motivation always doesn't make you money. Somebody can be fired up about what you do, but they're not swiping their credit card to invest in what you do. So the whole idea of using speaking in your business is you can literally walk into a room full of strangers and leave with a room full of clients. Imagine how awesome and amazing it would be if you were stepping on a virtual stage or on a physical stage and there were 500 people in the audience and you were talking about your product or service or your book. And after you did that, let's say 20 of them enrolled in your coaching program. Yes, that takes a little bit more than motivation, right? That takes a structured presentation. And the reason why I'm diving into this is because I created a program called Power at the Podium where it literally teaches you how to communicate to convert. And a lot of people out here, which is definitely needed and necessary, focus on your storytelling. They focus on how to structure a presentation. They focus on being lively on video. But at the end of the day, if you don't know how to present to persuade, not just to motivate or what I call communicate to convert, then people are not going to become customers and clients. So I really want to shift your mindset on what it means to be a motivational speaker. Yes, you want to be a motivational speaker, but I know plenty of motivational speakers who are not making any money. So you want to be, consider yourself as the presenter who persuades, right? Because if I can persuade you to now buy into my coaching program, I can persuade you that you need me in your life. I can persuade you that what I have to offer can transform, enhance, or elevate what it is that you do, then you're more likely to say yes. And a lot of us are so focused on being motivational and inspirational that we're truly leaving money on the table. So yes, being a motivational speaker is amazing and it's awesome. But more importantly, people are not just paying for motivation. Innovation. People are paying for strategies. They're paying for tips. They're paying for techniques. So I want you to ask yourself in your presentation, is it motivation rich and, present and persuasion poor? Meaning, are you getting people fired up and ready to go? And then they're spending their money on the next coach. They're spending them, their money on their next program and not yours. And it can be because, honestly, that you're too motivational. So, again, you want to get people fired up. You want to get people excited. You want to get people inspired. But you also want people to know that you are the solution to their problem. And you do that by presenting a presentation that is persuasive in nature. And what you're doing is you are persuading them to honestly work with you. And that's the piece that we're missing. We are not focused on persuasion. We're not co focused on conversion because at the end of the day, that is how you grow as an entrepreneur. That is how you grow, you know, as a um, person who's the advocate for your business. And we talk about marketing. Ooh, my phone just completely fell. We talk about marketing. Hold on. Let me get you back up here. Instagram. We talk about, whoo, this completely just fell. Okay. It doesn't want to go back up. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Hold on for a second. My phone just all the way fell and it's never done that before. Okay. Hold on. There we go. So what you want to think about is how can you reposition? So I'm just curious if you have ever just labeled yourself as a motivational speaker, I'm going to, I want you to go ahead and put that in the comments, right? Just motivation. Like if you ever labeled yourself as a motivational speaker, this is no type of judgment or shade. I'm just curious if you consider yourself as a motivational speaker. So go ahead and put that in the comments. Um, and the reason why this is so important is because my target market, who I super serve is not just speakers alone. I really go after the black woman because I don't know if you know this, but we've all heard the facts that black women are starting businesses at a faster rate than any other person, right? But also we are failing the fastest as well. So we're starting these businesses, but we're also failing because we don't necessarily have the tips, the tools, the, trick, the technology, the community to thrive. But more importantly, on average, black women in business make $24,000 in a year. That is two thousand. That is like what? $24,000 in a year. Not to mention black women in business are the most educated right? So they have bachelors, they have master's degrees, they have PhDs and they're getting, you know, certifications in certain lanes and fields, but we're still not making the most because we're too focused on being motivational and inspirational that we're not focused on the sales process. And here's a newsflash, right? 
A lot of us want to make money, but in order to do that, we have to get comfortable. We have to embrace sales. If you want someone to swipe that credit card, cash app, you pay that invoice, you have got to learn how to present to persuade. You have got to know how to communicate to convert. So yes, you want people to feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Yes, you want people to motive, be motivated. You want them to be inspired. You want them to be empowered. But more importantly, you want them to be persuaded. You want them to see what you have to offer, Christy, and say, yes, I need some of that. Shay, you want them to say, you you know what? I really like what you're doing. How can I be a part of that? And that's the part that we're missing as black women. We're afraid to make the sale. We're afraid to offer our product or service. Many times we're undercutting ourselves. So we know for a fact that what we're offering should be $2,500, but we're absolutely afraid to say $2,500. So we make it $500. And then even when we do that, we're not positioning it and marketing it correctly. So every time we speak, every time we step on stage, every time we do a podcast, every time somebody asks us to be on a panel, do a keynote or a workshop, we're so focused on presenting to persuade. We're so focused on, I mean, we're so focused on being motivational and inspirational. We just want to help somebody. But at the end of the day, you need to not even help. You need to fill your own bank account. And you do that by being intentional. And you do that by being conscious about how you are communicating, right? So not enough just to motivate someone. How do you motivate someone to spend money with you? You are an entrepreneur. You are a business owner. And if you want to keep thriving, sales have to come through. Your bank account has to go ching ching, right? You have to be able to not just motivate people, but persuade them to pay you. And that's a key part that we're missing. We want people to feel all warm and fluffy inside. And they are. And they're like, thank you. That was great. That was amazing. And then you're sitting there like, well, why didn't they buy from me? Why didn't they enroll in my coaching program? I made the offer. The comments were on fire. I got a lot of testimonials and feedback, but for whatever reason, they're not paying me because you're trying to be a motivational speaker. You need to be a presenter who persuades to get paid. You have to get into your mind that you are communicating to convert. Yes, your message is meaty. Yes, your message will be motivational. Yes, it will be inspirational. But at the end of the day, you are the chief everything officer, CEO. So what does that mean? That means until you have a team, you're in charge of sales, you're in charge of marketing, you're in charge of lead generation. And when you're speaking, because I believe that's the number one tool that you have to have in order to grow your business is you have to be willing to make Make the sale. Hey, Brian, how are you? That is my friend, Brian O's. If you're not familiar with the Black Speakers Network, make sure you check him out. Giselle says, strangely enough, when I started speaking and was thinking what to call myself, I called myself an empowerment speaker because I felt I'm not just motivating people to feel good, but I was giving them the strategies to shift to the next level. I love it, Giselle. But even with empowerment, I'd be a little bit just mindful of that because I say it all the time, black women, we are a lot of times conditioned to be the help and not conditioned to be the hero. So a lot of times we mean well. So we say certain things and we do certain things that really place us in a bin of being mediocre. And truly we are magnificent. So if we are trying to shift from a place of being mediocre to magnificent, there are certain things that we have to do, right? And that's get comfortable with making an offer. That is being comfortable with speaking and leveraging speaking, not just to let people feel good because at the end of the day, that is your time. That is your attention. That is your expertise. What you know is so valuable. What you understand, it can change somebody's life. So if you're not capitalizing on it and they're just walking away feeling warm and fuzzy, the next person who comes along and makes an offer is going to steal the client that you could have had. And it's not because you weren't good. It's not because you weren't great. It's is because you have not mastered the art of communicating to convert. Your whole focus is making them feel good. Your whole focus is inspiring. Your whole focus is empowering, which is not a bad idea. Nine times out of 10, they're going to get that from you just because of your story. They're going to get that for you. But what you're missing is, are you presenting to persuade? In your mind, are you taking your audience on a journey? So at the end, if they like what they hear, if they love what they hear, do they have an option to swipe a credit card? Do they have an option to pay an invoice? Do they have an option to cash app you? And as an entrepreneur who speaks, that needs to be a part of your marketing plan. So stop just taking random speaking requests because they're asking you. You should have a plan for that speaking request. You should be asking the organizer, 
If it's a free speaking opportunity, may I make an offer? Can I invite people to work with me after? And you don't do it in a way that's salesy or cheesy because I never do that. I am the first person to admit that I speak to serve, right? I am not just trying to sell you because who doesn't want to be sold, right? Nobody wants to feel like you're, you know, pushing a product or a program down somebody's throat. But if you show up and you rock their world, you blow their mind, you give them valuable content, you give them information that can transform the way they do business, the way they speak. Why would they not want to take that next level with you and invest in you? People are doing it all the time. It's happened to you. The reason why you joined a program, the reason why you bought somebody's book or product, or the reason why you said yes to a coaching program is because somebody presented in a way that persuaded you to pay them. So why are you not doing the same thing? So Kenyatta says, amen. Janelle says, yes. Um, Janelle says, wow, you need to, of course, I'm communicating to convert. I'm finding difficult converting. So Giselle, I do. I actually have that because through my, through my, um, I guess, career and journey through entrepreneurship, that is what I found that there's so many workshops, there's so many coaches out there that teach you how to be a powerful presenter, teach you how to speak with confidence, communicate with confidence. But at the end of the day, no one's teaching you how to communicate to convert. And that's what we're doing this for, right? I'm speaking because I'm hoping that this speaking engagement will get me more clients, but it's not because I haven't mastered the art of communicating to convert. So Giselle, I do have a um, program. It's called Power at the the podium. Um, I know that a few people are joining us. I know that Janelle is coming to power at the podium. I know that Carol has already done power at the podium. Josephine is joining me for power at the podium. And it is like an ultimate program that really teaches you how to not only structure a presentation that gets people to say yes to you, it also shows you how to grab somebody's attention from the beginning and then keep their attention so at the end they're begging to do business with you. Because at the end of the day, when you are speaking, there should be structure to it. And too many of us are winging it. Too many of us are saying yes to speaking opportunities with no plan, no rhyme, no reason. Now you're burned out. Now you're frustrated because you're doing all these virtual events, you're doing all these podcast interviews, and your bank account still says zero, or let's be honest, negative. It's not growing because you haven't mastered the art of communicating to convert. So if you are interested in Power at the Podium, I would love to share that with you. I do have one coming up in September. And as I was preparing for that, I just realized how many of us, you know, have lied to ourselves thinking that, you know, in order to get more customers and clients, you got to better, you got to be a better speaker. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Being a speaker great speaker does actually is beneficial. It helps, right? It does. But it's not the only thing that you need in order to make money. How many of you, okay, I'm just going to ask you really quickly. How many of you have been to an event and you know for a fact that the speaker got paid and they were horrible? Like, you know this, like you're looking like somebody paid him, somebody paid her. I could have got up there, closed my eyes, did this in my sleep and you paid that person, right? But for whatever they did, they persuaded that meeting planner, they persuaded that event planner to say yes to them, right? Because at the end of the day, you are a persuader. Your goal is to get people to say yes to you. And at the end of the day, what this breaks down to is sales, right? We've all been the audience. You're like, you're scratching your head. You can't even concentrate because the person on stage is so horrible, but they must have did something right to communicate to that event planner to hire them. So while you're so focused on being a motivational speaker, an empowerment speaker, yes, that's things that are necessary. You need to polish up your sales skills. And I know that sometimes as entrepreneurs, especially as women, we think sales is a bad word, but sales is what's going to feed your family. Sales is going to keep money, you know, um, in the bank. Sales is what's going to put food on your table, right? So when you begin to understand that being a great speaker is just not enough, right? That's part of it. That's not the whole equation. So yes, get your professional development, take your public speaking course, hire your public speaking coach. But if you're an entrepreneur, you need to have the art of sales and conversion and persuasion because people are buying into you. Yes, because of what you're saying, but because you're making an offer, your presentation has elements of sales into it that can convert someone. Now, let me be very clear. It should not be a 45 minute pitch fest. It shouldn't be buy my program, buy my service. Now, when you structure it, and that's exactly what I teach, it should be done in a way that is of excellence. It should be done in a way that serves someone, right? So that's why I say, I don't speak to sell. We, we've all heard that I speak to serve because my goal is if I show up 
Rokita, I want to make sure that you're walking away with something that you can use right away or the same day. Rokita's went to um, power at the podium, so she knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, Gersha as well. Sales is the key. And that's what we're missing. And it's not always our fault. And that's why I want to talk about it because the reason why black women are making the least, and I don't know, I don't know all the details. I just know that black women are making the least. They're averaging about $24,000 a year in sales. And I bet you it's because they haven't mastered the art of sales because we feel uncomfortable asking for stuff. We feel uncomfortable or we downplay our greatness. We literally have a 2,500 product or service, but we're marketing it for $500 because we don't have the guts. We don't have the courage to really charge our worth. That's a conversation for another day. I'm not talking about that right now, but what I am talking about is your ability to master the art of communicating to convert. So when you get that speaking opportunity, when somebody reaches out to you about their virtual event, you need to ask yourself, does my presentation lead them to an opportunity to work with them? It shouldn't just be a feel good presentation. It should not be just a presentation that gets you fired up. That used to be me. That's why I'm so passionate about working with black women in business because I have always had the gift of public speaking. Can I be transparent? Like, I want to be transparent. Can I be transparent? And some of you, if you know me, you know my story. But at the end of the day, I've always had the gift of gab. I'm always, God has definitely given me, you know, the gift of, you know, being able to put words together, be able to speak life into people. But the problem was, wasn't nobody paying me. Now, I know that is not grammatically correct. I got a whole bachelor's and a master's degree from Howard University, but sometimes I got to say it so plain that you understand. I have always been a great speaker. My problem, my issue was I was communicating and I was inspiring. I was motivating people were doing testimonials for me, saying how amazing I was, and they were not enrolling in my program. They were not hiring me as a speaker. They were not taking my events. They were not because... I will leave them feeling warm and funny or fuzzy inside, but I wasn't accurately setting up my presentation so they can do business with me afterwards. So that is what I want you to understand right now, that as you begin to move forward and right now, the virtual speaking world is alive and well. I mean, for the most part, if you ain't doing a podcast or an interview or speaking somewhere in these speaking streets, I want you to look at what you're doing because there's so many opportunities to speak. But as an entrepreneur, I don't want you to get caught up in this time of spinning your wheels and taking on speaking opportunities that are not increasing your bottom line. Speaking as an entrepreneur should be a revenue stream in your business. Speaking in your business should be a lead generation in your business. Speaking should be a way for you to attract and not repel clients. So when you're getting these invitations to speak at these virtual events, if you're getting these invitations to be a panel at a live event, if you're getting these invitations to be a keynote speaker, ask yourself, are you maximizing and monetizing these opportunities? Are you going above and beyond just being a motivational speaker? Because at the end of the day, people don't just want motivation. They want practical tips for you to teach them how to get from where they are to where they want to be. And that is what people are paying for. So you motivate them, you inspire them along the way, but at the end, you have a solution to what their issue is. I'll give you an example. A lot of people come to me because they did not sign up to be a speaker. Some people, you know, they say, you know what? I wanted to be a speaker since I came out the womb. I love speaking. I love talking. A lot of people are like, you know what, Quinn? Yeah, no, I didn't sign up for this speaker life. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I was doing my entrepreneur thing. I was minding my business in, you know, entrepreneurship and business. And all of a sudden people started to go in my inbox and ask me, do I want to speak? Do I want to be on a panel? And I found that I liked it. But then I found that I wasn't really making any money of it and it became a time robber, right? So at the end of the day, what I began to understand, hey, Keandra, how are you? That a lot of us are speaking to inspire, motivate, and empower, but we're not speaking to persuade people. We're not speaking. We're not leveraging the speaking opportunities. So just like you might use, you can't hear me? Okay, hold on. That's odd. Let me know if you can hear me now, Keandra. Um, so if you're speaking for whatever reason and you are not getting clients after you're speaking, nine times out of 10, you're probably just motivating them and not persuading them. So here's what you need to understand. And I, I talked about this before. Um, a lot of us are trying to figure out, well, Quinn, I am getting these speaking opportunities. How do I know if it's something that I should do? Why can you not hear me? Okay. 
That is odd. Kavet, can you hear me? I see that you're on Instagram. I'm not sure why you guys can't hear me. Okay, if you can't hear me, I apologize. Try going over to speakblackwoman.com and joining the group. I'm there as well. I'm not sure why you can't hear me. So Gersha, I'm on live on Instagram. There's My Instagram audience is saying that they can't hear me, but I know that my Facebook live community is saying that they can hear me. So one of the biggest things that I get... Um, um, in regards to this is Quinn, how do I know if I should speak for free? Cause a lot of times if you're getting invited to these virtual events and virtual conferences that people for the most part are not paying you. Right. But again, you're using speaking as lead generation. You're using speaking as a marketing strategy for your business. So I'm going to give you a quick little acronym that I tell people to use all the time when it comes down to, um, good. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So Kavet says I sound good. Okay, perfect. Keandra says that she can hear me as well. So here is what you need to understand. Before you say yes to another free speaking opportunity, before you say yes to um, anything else that you do in regards to your business, before you say yes to another Instagram Live, another LinkedIn Live interview, I love a Facebook Live interview, I love the virtual summit they're going to put your flyer on. I want you to ask yourself this question because, again, your goal is to speak as a marketing strategy. Your goal is to communicate so at the end of your presentation, people are begging to do business with you. So here's what you need to understand. You have to understand your gift. What is your gift? This is how you analyze if speaking for free works for you. Because again, you don't want to just be a motivational speaker. You want to be able to communicate to convert that leads clients, I mean, leads potential clients to become clients and customers of your business. So number one, this is how you analyze if you should speak for free. Number one, it is the G in gift, your gift. What is your goal? Why are you even speaking? Is your goal publicity? Is it visual? Is it um, you want to test out a new topic? Is your goal to connect with somebody else's platform? For example, I love teenage girls, but I don't speak to teenage girls. So if somebody calls me and says, hey, Quinn, we have a group of teenage girls, that's not really my thing because at the end of the day, I know that I'm an entrepreneur and I know that I want to work with you afterwards. And teenage girls are not buying verbal business cards. Teenage girls are not attending power at the podium, right? So again, that's not necessarily what I want to do. So what is your goal of the speaking opportunity? Do you want to get footage? Do you want to get a testimonial? So before you speak for free, you have to analyze your gift. What is the goal of your, you saying yes to the speaking opportunity, because guess what? You speaking for 30 minutes, you speaking for an hour is your time, is your experience, is your expertise. And if you want to get something out of it, you have to be intentional. So what is your goal? Why are you saying yes to this speaking? Why are you saying yes to doing this virtual seminar? Why are you saying yes to be interviewed on somebody's Instagram live, right? Is it going to serve you? What is your goal, right? Is it to test out, you know, your speaking ability, right? Whatever that is, you need to do that. Next is your income potential, right? So if your ultimate goal is to speak somewhere and you want to get five or six new clients, if the person only has five or six Instagram followers, that might not be a good fit for you. So every time you're speaking, you're trying to look at what is the income potential and it might not happen right away. So I know for a fact, I've spoken for Black Speakers Network a few times, right? And every time I speak at Black Speakers Network, I get a couple of clients because guess what? It is Black Speakers and Brian Olds has built an awesome community. He has over 10,000 people on Facebook, who is a part of his community. I think he has over 20,000 people on his Instagram. So my income potential was like, okay, if I do this, I want to get at least four or five clients. You have to think the same way. You have to think entrepreneurial all the time. You're not speaking just to speak. Speaking is not charity work. Speaking is lead generation for your business. Speaking is a marketing strategy for your business. So when you go into this, you have to ask yourself, if I'm going to speak for free and nobody is paying me up front, what is the income potential? You you see how I'm already shifting your brain on thinking I'm just a motivational speaker versus I am a salesperson. You are the chief salesperson for yourbusiness.com, right? You are that person. So Constance says, hey, hey, Constance, how are you? Good to see you as always. Hope that you are healthy and in good spirits. Shay says, tell them to go back. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, everyone else can hear you. Okay, perfect. So I just was looking at some of the comments. So you want to think about that. What is your income potential, right? How much money could you possibly possibly make. And right now it might not be upfront money, but again, if this person, you know, income potential could even be, if you're speaking somewhere, can you get 20 new followers? Can you get 50 more people in your Facebook group, right? Start thinking more entrepreneurial and less motivational. You have a business to run. You have a family to feed. You have goals and dreams that you need to accomplish. And you can't do that by just being a motivational speaker. You have to have a plan for what you want to do. So every time someone asks you to speak for free, 
You're looking at this opportunity as a lead generation. You're looking at this as a marketing strategy for your product, your service, your program, right? So you have to ask yourself, what is the goal, right? You have to ask yourself, what is the income potential, right? And also you got to ask yourself, what is the fees associated with this? Now, I usually talk about this when it comes to live, right? So a lot of times we'll get a lot of opportunities to come speak for free, you know what I mean? And it, it will be at an, an event, right? So I know the world's a little shut down, but as the world opens back up, because it will open back up, I want you to be prepared. Hey, Rashida, good to see you. Um, I want you to be prepared for that. So I remember one time I was asked to speak for free, right? And I got into my car and I went, number one, I didn't even calculate the fact that it was tolls. So I had to pay about two tolls before I even got to the speaking engagement. Once I got to the speaking engagement, mind you, they were not paying me. I had to pay for parking. Parking in DC was $30, right? So I already had to pay parking. That was $30. Not to mention, I have a three and I have a four-year-old. So I had to pay money for a babysitter to watch these children while I went and spoke for free. So I paid for tolls. I had to pay for a babysitter and I had to pay for parking. I was already $250 in the hole before I even stepped on stage. So I want you to understand that when you are speaking, there might be a cost associated. So you have to ask yourself, what is the fees associated with me saying yes to this opportunity? Now, the fees speaking virtually are not as high, but when the world opens back up and you're going out, what is the gas associated? That's a fee, right? You got gas, you got tolls, you got potential parking. So when you're speaking, it's not necessarily just you speaking for free. You're looking at this opportunity like, oh my gosh, when I open my mouth and I get to this opportunity, is it? cost me fees on the back end that I'm not even aware of. So now I'm mad. I'm big girl, man. I'm like, not only did I say yes to this opportunity, I'm now paying to speak where I know what I've learned is so valuable. So I'm not saying don't speak for free, right? But what I'm saying is you need to analyze every opportunity, whether it's virtual or in person to make sure that it's aligned and it makes sense. Because I don't, you know, you don't want to get there and then have all these surprises. Now you feel some type of way. You on stage and you're like, you know what? I didn't even realize this is going to cost me that much. Now I'm mad. I'm like, dang, I'm a mo I am motivate them. They were excited. They were empowered. And guess what? I didn't even make an offer for them to work with me. So I'm now negative $250. And I don't want anybody who can hear me, who rocks with me, who's a part of the tribe to be negative anything. And this is the things that people are not teaching you. Again, I mentioned in the beginning of this that 49% of speakers make their money speaking and then selling their product or service at the back of the room. 51% of speakers get an upfront fee or honorarium. That is about 50, 50%. So if you're not getting paid up front to speak, you still have an opportunity to make money, but you don't want to make sure that by you going and speaking for free, it is literally driving your sales into the hole. You want to make sure that it really makes sense. I'm talking about even too, when I come in here and I'm doing this, this, this virtual costs money. It, it's lights. Y'all see this microphone. You see all of this, this all costs something, right? You know, I, I pay $75 a month so I can have Verizon Fios so I ain't choppy because everybody named mama on Zoom and I want you to be able to hear me. That costs something. It costs me something to turn on these lights. It's called bg and &E, right? So you want to make sure that, yes, you are intentional about how you share your expertise and your experience. Because as a speaker, when you, when you start this business, the invitations to speak will come. And I want to make sure that you're monetizing and maximizing those. So how do you do that? Especially for the free ones, you want to make sure that you're analyzing the free opportunity using your gift. So again, what is the goal that, why are you speaking? Also, what is the income potential? Next, what are the fees associated? And last but not least, what is your time, right? So people, you know, over, they disrespect time a lot. We don't understand. So by you showing up and saying yes, right, you want to make sure that it, it's working. So I'm talking about thinking about it from the stand of, okay, you might have to speak for 30 minutes, but it might take you an hour to get there. So even with the 30 minutes, you might be at the conference for two or three hours. And then afterwards you have to drive home. That's another hour, right? So that's your time, right? But let's talk about if you're speaking virtually, right? They're not counting in that you got a whole bachelor's degree. They're not counting in that you might have a master's. They're not counting in the time that you had to get that certification so you can be more knowledgeable about the information that you're presenting. That all costs something. So when you show up, you want to make sure that your time is respected, that your time is valuable. So that's why you just can't motivate people because your time is money. So as an entrepreneur, when you show up, you're taking consideration this bachelor's, 
That's four years. You know what I mean? Your, your certification. And that's not forget life. I'm not even talking about the people who went to college. If you are a mother, if you are a speaker, if you are a coach, you got life experience, right? So the reason why you're able to talk about something because you might have experienced it for 20 years, right? So you're showing up, delivering information in 20 minutes with 20 years of experience, I have to make sure that my time is compensated for. So I don't have the time just to show up and motivate you. That is part of what I'm going to do. But what I am going to do is make sure that I'm leveraging this speaking opportunity. I'm leveraging this speaking platform as a way to bring more customers and clients into my business. Okay. So Giselle has a question. Giselle says, question on fees. If there's a call for speakers and you apply, is it normal practice for you to pay an administrative fee? No. I don't do that. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. There is a speak for pay, meaning like you can actually pay a presenter um, or event planner to speak on their stage. Um, every now and then I will think about, but I have not yet. For the most part, um, if you're asking me to speak and you're not paying me, I'm going to need you to waive all fees, please. And thank you, ma'am. Shanice says, hey, Shanice says, great points. Um, Kenyatta says, yes, we must be intentional. Gersha says, yes, time equals money, education, money, respect the speaker. And here's the biggest thing, right? about speaking, right? Which I've realized, right? And this don't, I'm not gonna try to go on my soapbox, right? Until you start honoring your goals, your income potential, your fees and your time, nobody else will, right? And I'm not saying don't speak for free because I do. That's one of the main reasons I speak. I call it waiving my fee, but I'm doing it because I know at the back end, I am making an offer for you to work with me. Here's the problem about how people are disrespecting our voices, how people are disrespecting our craft as a speaker. When you walk into a physical event, I'm not talking about virtual right now, I'm talking about physical events, you best better believe they paid the venue. They paid the DJ, they paid the videographer, and they paid the photographer. And they had the nerve not to pay you. And you be a motivational? No, ma'am, no, sir. So if I walk into something, you best believe before I say yes, I'm looking at the gift. What is my goal of this speaking opportunity? What is the income potential that I can make? What are the fees associated? And are they going to be able to compensate me for my time, right? Because if I get there and I see and I know that the DJ is getting paid, I know that the person who um, is doing the sound system is getting paid. I know they paid the venue. So for me to show up, I have got to not just be a motivational speaker. I have got to embrace that. I need to communicate to convert. When I leave this speaking engagement, I need leads. I need more Instagram followers. I need people to be a part of the Speak Black Woman group. I need um, to make sure that I have positioned myself in a way as a business owner and not just a speaker. Right. Because, again, you are entrepreneurial at heart. So when you go into these opportunities, I need you to think about not just your speaker. I already know that because I already know you're a great speaker. Shay, I already know you're a great speaker. Uh, psh, oh, my gosh. Minister G, I've seen you in action. I already know that you are great. Right. That's not what I'm doubting. What I am concerned about when it comes to the black woman is she's so focused on being motivational. She's so focused on being inspiring. She's so focused on empowering that she forgets gets to communicate to convert she forgets to or it's not on her radar to use the speaking opportunity as a way to gain more business as a way to expose more people to her products and services and what it is that she actually does right so you need to think about that because everybody else is getting paid and a lot of times speakers are the low end of the totem pole unless you're a keynote speaker or a celebrity or something like that they're not checking for us like that so we mentally have to be prepared to go into the speaking opportunity on a mission. We have to be um, prepared to go in with our own agenda because they have an agenda. They asked us. So apparently they see some value in what I do. But all of a sudden, when it comes to the budget on the honorarium, crickets, they don't have that. And I'm not saying don't do it. What I am saying is, are you analyzing the opportunity, whether it's virtually or in person to make sure that it fits with what you want to do? Because at the end of the day, as an entrepreneur, you should always be marketing. You should always be looking for leads. You should always be looking for customers and clients. When it comes to speaking, it's the exact same thing. Stop showing up and giving your goods away for free. Stop showing up with 20, 30 years of experience and expertise and giving away for 30 minutes and going home empty handed. If you have rocked their world, if you have blessed them, if you've given them great information, why would you not offer them another opportunity to work with you? You gave them the tip of the iceberg. You gave them the appetizer, right? At least make a pay for the main course. 
we out here giving away the appetizer, the main course, and we giving people dessert for free. No, ma'am, no, sir. Why would we do that? I don't want anyone to do that, right? So hold on. Kavet says when she doesn't see her own value, listen, yes, it takes a village. We must build each other up and thank you for this. Yes, of course, Kavet, because at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. Hey, Lanita. I love Lanita. She's just so great. Um, You want to think about that. And that's the part that I see that people are missing. So I am a true advocate of waving my feet, right? I'm a true advocate of not necessarily getting a whole bunch of honorarium because if I know if you experience Quinn, if you can taste a little bit of Quinn, if you can get a little bit of my style, you're going to say, well, Quinn, what else do you have to offer? That's exactly what I want you to say. You know what? I have, you can work with me. We can create your verbal business card. We can work together. We can, I can show you what you can do with power at the podium, but you need to start shifting your mindset from a motivational speaker to an entrepreneurial speaker. Can you look at every single opportunity as a way to grow your business? Can you look at speaking opportunities, whether it's virtual in person as a way to drive more people to your Facebook page? more people to buy your Instagram or, you know, um, become followers of you on Instagram. Right. So you give them a little taste, right. But understand that your taste costs something, your taste costs something. You can't be out here letting everybody taste and then not even offering the opportunity for the full course meal. Like that doesn't make any sense. We know this by going to the mall. It'd be all of them out there. They got the chicken on the stick. They'll put the taste in your mouth and what they'll say, go over there and spend seven ninety nine and buy this chicken hibachi. Right. And we do it. Right. But they at least have the understanding. If I give you this taste, I want you to go buy, go buy right now. <laughs> right. So the same thing with you. Give them a little taste. That's your free thing that you're doing. But at the end of the day, are you communicating to converting? Are you just so focused on being, you know, the person who motivates and inspires? And I'm going to leave you with this because I know that we're almost out of time. Right. So Eric says <laughs> you're talking good. Right. But I want you to know that because I'm just I'm just. I feel like speakers are often disrespected, but when it comes to black women, even more, we don't stick up for ourselves. And again, I'm not, you know, over this. This is still some things I struggle with every now and then because we don't want to let anybody down. We don't want to seem like anything or we feel like we have to get perfect for the opportunity. And what I learned from Marshawn Evans Daniels, I'm reading her book right now called Believe Bigger. And it just really kind of opened up my mind to the way that we're showing up and really using our voice. And, you know, we're so focused on the appearance, right? We're focused on what it looks like. Do we have our headshot? Do as our marketing materials matter? Do um, we have the right type of website, right? And at the end of the day, we're so focused on the appearance. We're not focus on the anointing that we have to speak and serve and get paid, right? We are so focused on what it looks like. We're so focused on that. But at the end of the day, it's just like, that's great. But last time I checked, I couldn't cash in. You did a good job. I couldn't take, you were amazing to the bank. I could not necessarily, you know, swipe or cash app. Quinn, you were amazing. (laughs) I couldn't do any of that. It is not until you understand It is not until you know that part of your job as a presenter, part of your job as a public speaker is to make sure that yes, you speak, yes, you inspire, yes, you empower, yes, you motivate, but you have to understand that sales needs to be a part of your DNA. And you do that by being intentional and conscious about presenting to persuade, communicating to convert. Okay, that is your ultimate goal. Speaking is a platform. Speaking is a marketing strategy. The same way you use social media to market your business, the same way people use magazines, newspapers, television ads as a marketing strategy, you also need to be using speaking as a marketing strategy. So stop saying yes to everything. Is an alignment. When you're saying yes to these virtual events, is your target market there? Can they afford to buy what you have to offer? Are you able to make an a um a an offer. Brian Olds again of the Black Speakers Network posted a really good question in the group, and he talked about what is a what do you say no to? Why would you not take a speaking engagement? And people were talking about alignment and values, and I put down that I'm going to say no if you're not paying me and I can't make an offer because now you're telling me that you don't disrespect my time, or you don't respect my time. You're disrespecting my time, right? So you're telling me that you're not going to pay me, and then you want me to come and speak and give my experience, my expertise, and I can't even make an offer. For your people to work with me further. Now, the offer might not be a straight offer by my coaching course, but I at least should be able to offer you an opportunity to join my email list. That's why you have to have a freebie, right? So I have to at least be able to extend an offer, an invitation for the people who like what they heard to work with me after the fact. If I can't do that, you don't respect my craft. 
You don't respect my blood, sweat, and tears. You don't respect my errors because the way I can show up now, the way I can speak life into you now, Eric, the way that I can give you some pointers, Gersha, the way that I can show you what to do now, Giselle, is because I did it all the way wrong for so many years. The reason why I can show up with confidence and clarity now, Lanita, is because that for many times I was just getting up there speaking. People were getting excited and I was coming home broke. But I got what you call a three and a four year old. So I have to make sure that when I speak, when I open up my mouth, it has to go towards my bottom line. I can't just be out here speaking to motivate, inspire and empower. I've done that. I've earned my stripes. I've been in these speaking streets for I calculate over 14 years. Right. Don't judge me. I know probably like I'm 12, but trust me, I got a little bit of miles under my belt. Right. So you got to think about that when you are opening your mouth, like what you know is so powerful, what you know can't be Google, what you know can be found in a book. So you have to respect yourself by respecting your time, by making sure that you're not just motivating people. Motivating is the icing on the cake. Your presentation should be packed with conversion. Your presentation should be packed with persuasion. So when you're done, when you drop that mic, they were like, oh my gosh, Gersha, how can I work with you? Oh my gosh, Erica, how can I, I mean, Eric, how can I be a part of your upcoming coaching program? That's the way you need to communicate. So again, that's the number one mistake that I see black women making is they keep marketing themselves as a motivational speaker. They want to be so motivational. And that's not what you really want if you're an entrepreneur. If you're an entrepreneur, you want to master the art of presenting to persuade. You want to master the art of communicating to convert. And if you are definitely interested, I would love to talk to you more about my upcoming event. It's called Power at the Podium. And I teach speakers and entrepreneurs just like you how to deliver a presentation that gets you paid, how to structure a presentation. So at the end, they are begging to do business with you. And if you are interested in that, just send me a message and I can give you the details on how you can work with me in September, because I am sick and tired of you putting your awesomeness, you putting your amazingness on a discount. Stop positioning yourself as if you were a pay less type of speaker when you really are the Louis Vuitton of your industry. So it's all about how you market yourself. And it's not just a motivational speaker. That is part of what you do. But what you really are, are a sales associate for your business. You are the chief sales officer for your business. And the more you understand that and the more you get that, the more you will begin to get clients and customers every time you open your mouth. So as always, I appreciate you. Stella, thank you so much. I'm glad that you were able to join us. Um, Christy, send me a message and I'll send you some information on how we can talk about it. Eric says, anything after two questions is now an invoice. <laughs> Listen, I love that. You are absolutely right. But yes, I just want you to understand at the end of the day, as a black woman, as a black man, right? What you know, man, is just so amazing. And a lot of times we are cutting ourselves short because we just have not mastered this art of broadcasting our brilliance. We have not mastered the art of being comfortable with conversion. We haven't mastered the art of speaking to serve and not just speaking to sell. I don't want to sell you. Ain't but one Quinn Conyers, right? So I don't want you to feel like you got got. I want to make sure that when I open my mouth and what comes out of your my mouth can serve you, can bless you, can transform you, can take you to the next level, right? And because of that, you will go the next level. So again, I thank you so much for joining me. And each and every Wednesday at four o'clock, um, join me. Tell somebody about Speak Black Woman. I'm here to make sure that you become the spokesperson for your business, your book, or your brand. And again, if you're interested at all in you know attending Power at the Podium in September, definitely send me a message. I'll send you a link or even book some time that we could talk about what it is and how it would really serve you. Because I'm just on a mission to make sure that you are using your voice, primarily public speaking, as a way to leverage your business. Business. So again, my name is Quinn. I want to thank you so much for joining me with Quarantine with Quinn. Um, and again, I look forward to serving you and seeing you and make sure that every single time you open up your mouth, you are asking yourself, am I using my gift? Am I using this opportunity as a way to grow my business? If the answer is yes, you're on the right track. If the answer is no, you and I need to have a conversation. I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. And as always, speak up for your business because what you know is so valuable. And I want to make sure that you are an advocate for your awesomeness by making sure that you can verbalize your value. I'll see you next week. Have a great day.